I'm going to be doing sort of serialization of books. So I think it's quite nice to do these things. Uh, so there's a book I've got here, which is The Five Top Regrets of the Dying, now by Bronnie Ware. Now, I, now I've read this, most of it. Um, I haven't completed it all because it's quite a hard read because, as you all know, um, Mum passed away last year. Um, so we're getting on to year two. But I'm starting to accept it. Um, and one of the things I'm really passionate about is us. You know, this happened so quickly. Um, and I have, I'm having conversations with my sister, and it's brought us close together. We're recognizing that we're all in the last third of our lives, right? So Ray Dalio talks in his, in his, in his, in his great um, book, Principles. And also, he's got an app called Principles where he talks about the third. So you get the first third when you're sort of growing, and then you've got the middle third up to your 40s, then 40s, 50s, into your last third of your life. So you've got probably 30 years left or something like that if you get a good life, right? Um, and so we're in the last sort of phase of our life, and this, this phase is meant to be one of the happiest of your life. Um, no, it's not for everybody, but it's for most people, potentially. I and mean, I know my mum definitely had, you know, the latter years, she did have a great life. Um, she really enjoyed it and of course there's exceptions to that rule um, but I'd like to just share some of this because I think it's really important that we take these lessons and we apply them so I'm just going to just read the first one um, and I'm just going to read it because I've, I don't need to really read the book um, so I'm just going to read what the first regret okay. is written in this book and the first regret it says here so we can talk about this it says I wish I'd had the courage to live life to, sorry to live a life true to myself I'll repeat that. I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself. And that's regret one. Um, now, for me, um, when I was younger, um, I didn't do this. Now, Lee already knows. I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into with Lee talks about the brand and Jose No Inspiration Nation. And I, I probably I don't know when I changed it. Um, but I tried, what, probably two, three, maybe two or three years ago, I think, maybe now. I don't know. Or was it recently? More recent. That might be recent. I don't know. But I wanted to change it to Jose Noya. I think it was obviously times a weird concept. I think it was. I think it was even more recently than that, actually, Joe, that you did that change. So it might have been around mum's, you know, mum's passing. But I, but when I was younger, I never really wanted to stand out. I wanted to blend in, and of course, back in the eighties when I was growing up. You know, I, I, I was Spanish. Well, my dad was Spanish, so that was, you know, back then it, we weren't so culturally aware, let's say. So when I said things like name was Jose, people used to think, oh, it's Josie and joked about. And and so I didn't want to stand out. So I just said, well, just call me Joe because it's easier, right? It's easier. It's more English. Um, so I didn't want to stand out. I didn't want to be different. Um, and and I really wasn't living my life. So I, I was quite good at football. I was quite good at sports. Um, and people would say, yeah, you're doing really well. Um, but then I had friends that would say, oh, you know, but the thing is, when you start to get good at something, you start to get targeted, um, i.e., you know, people say, you know, you're not as good or, you know, you you get under the spotlight, essentially. And I couldn't cope with that. So on times, I purposely didn't play well, so I wouldn't stand out, which is really weird when I think about it now. And and it's really funny because I was having a conversation with my um, with my sister about this. And, and it was round about the people that I surrounded myself with, you know, and, you know, some of the people weren't very good for me. And, and so, you know, they'd, they'd take over my confidence. And so I would just shrink and I'd want to not stand out at all. And so I wasn't, as they say, shining my light on the things. And so I would draw back. I don't want to stand out. I want to be very quiet in a classroom. I don't want to make any waves. And that is what I, this is what I took away from recently my mum passing away and reading this book because I got this book after that. So for me... Right now, you know, even when I started this Choo Choo channel over 10 years ago, um, that was the start, I think, of me starting to be who I was. And only, obviously, the last four years when we sort of started the podcast and I've you know, done the work, uh, self-development work through Stephen Covey's Seven Habits, we talked about. We talked about this book before, haven't we? Absolutely, we have. realised that. So I've done a lot of work with that. And I worked through Evan Carmichael's book, uh, Built to Serve, and what your one word and speaking to Mark Drager and, and people like that. And it's only then I really noticed, and honestly through my leadership stuff that we talk about Lee and, you know, use on my team and we talk about that. So I realized there's a pattern of me wanting to help people. But to help people, I needed to be myself. And there was one time when I wanted to say, like, I want to be a coach, I want to be a coach. Could I be a coach? And you always got to make a decision. So it's almost like a decision I made. I made, I'm going to be a coach. So if you are going to be a coach, 
then you've got to have the identity of being a coach. And that means you've got to start acting like a coach, be the coach, you know, do the learning, do the work. And so I started to do that. But the thing is, when you do that, you start to stand out. You start to be a target. You start to have to deal with criticism, with challenges to your thought process. And I think that's healthy. But there's also the other sides which aren't so healthy that people might start to, you know, be challenging to you, but not in a very nice way. And Lee knows what I'm talking about, where I've tried these things before. And but through that challenge and being very, very um, challenged and I got a lot, you know, I struggled emotionally with it. But through all that, by, by holding on to coaching, by holding true to values, I decided I am going to be a coach. I'm going to live my life to what I am. And through all that work, I've now discovered that that is what I want to do. And this is why the last four years I've been on social media. I've been on YouTube. I'm now talking from my heart and not being apologetic. And if you don't like it, you don't have to watch. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen. But I'm going to be unapologetic for me wanting to help people because I want people to discover the power of coaching and what this 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 whole thing is about, inspiring people to get to the next, next, next level, all within the, a capability thing. So you don't have to pay tons of money, right? Because tons of coaching calls are loads and loads of money. We don't want any of that. We want people to have real good access to really good information, learn from experiences that we have here, pass on those experiences, and have that coaching mindset. And now, up to this point, it's happening. Things are starting to happen. YouTube's growing. I'm working in my current place of work. That's working. Things are taking traction. Now, I don't know where it's going to go, but all I know is that I'm much more stepping into that. I'm not going to look back and go, I wish I had done that. And that's what this is about. So that, for me, is it. So on right now, I'm being unapologetic for me, and I'm, tr- and I'm delve- ridding myself of all the, you know, all the stuff that I had as a child is not to stand out because when you want to do when you believe in something so strongly you do have to step into the arena Absolutely. and you have to be able to face the criticism and that's the thing that i find quite hard still but i'm facing it i'm prepared for people to challenge me and we just take it from there so that's where i sit with it at the minute and i want everybody here that's listening on tiktok and listening to the podcast step into who you are as long as you're doing good for the world helping other people that is the best, I think, one of the best places you can ever be. So that, Lee, 100%, I don't know if you've picked anything out of that, Lee, but 100%. Anyway, any thoughts? 